Shalom. Before I begin, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechak Wadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well, and who I've learned this truth from through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Peace and salutations unto all the Akim, you brothers preaching this word in truth and its sincerity across the four corners of the earth. And shalom to the hopeful elect, you sincere believers scattered wherever you may be. Uh, so the title of this one, the Lord is coming to visit the idols of Babylon. Um, you know, this title, this lesson inspired off the lesson uh, video Elder Apostle Ramblab just went into. Um, title of his and Lord willing, I could throw it in the description box is the one third and the two third. What and where is it? And as he goes on to prove in this lesson, that place is America, Babylon, the great. OK, and um, as he mentioned, as the apostle had mentioned, you know, the title, the Lord is coming to visit the idols of Babylon. All right. The, the place, the land of graven images. So we're just going to hop into it. Lord willing, uh, this will be edifying and exhorting on to you. So to begin, I have uh Psalm 97, so like it's Psalm 97 and verse 5, it reads, The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. And those hills going into uh, governments, you know, um, positions of power. And it is going to melt. Think of like a candle when you light it. <laughs> uh, that wax dwindles down. And at, at the presence of the Lord, because that's what the Lord is coming with. Fire. Them, uh, them laser beams, you know. Contrary to popular belief, he's coming to, to fuck shit up, for lack of better words. It says, the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. It says, the heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Like the scriptures say, uh, every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. And is going to proclaim his righteousness. He's coming. What do you say? Uh, he's not coming to meet thee as a man. He's coming in his full glory, right? His full power. And literally, when you look up the heavens, into the heaven, into the atmosphere, that right there is going to declare his righteousness. You know what I'm saying? And everybody, everybody's gonna see it. He's coming on that, on that, uh, what's that, uh, a huge mountain, like a second Ezra goes into. But um, verse seven, this this being the point, Psalms ninety seven and seven, confounded be all they that serve graven images. So not only are the the idols gonna be confounded, as uh, the elder brought out. With uh, Zechariah 13 and 2, as well as all those that serve these these idols, they're going to be visited as well. You know, it says uh, that boast themselves of idols, worship him, all ye guys. I'm going to read this in the NLT, Psalm 97 and 7. Those who worship idols are disgraced. Yeah, they're condemned already because they don't believe. They're, but they're believing in an idol that has no breath in them, that can't save them. That didn't make anything. It says all who brag about their worthless gods for every God must bow to him. And all of them are going to be confounded. Because why? They have no power. I'm going to grab it real quick. It's in the uh, prior chapter, Psalm 96 and 5. I'll start at 4. For the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So all these uh, these uh, heathenistic gods, they're all idols because they hold no power. All right, But our power, the true living power, made the heavens. Okay, He is. He exists. There's no beginning or end to Yahweh. 
But what? There's a beginning and end to these idols. Because at the end of the day, like we'll go into Lord Rillen, uh, like it says in the Book of Wisdom, they were made by the, the works of men or by the by the hands of men. These idols came about. And through the through the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Through the vanity of man brought about these these different uh, stories and, you know, what I'm saying gave them power, so to speak, when they have no power. So it's, it's a worthless power It's made up. It's fiction. But uh, let me go to Isaiah 19. Because that's one of the uh, the first precepts that came to mind uh, when the elder was going into it. So this is Isaiah 19 and 1. It says the burden of Egypt. And this is not speaking of ancient Egypt, but speaking of this current Egypt, the spiritual Egypt, also being America. Okay. That says what? Like uh, Deuteronomy tw uh, 28 and 68. Real quick. It says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So how do how did, uh, you know, what I'm saying part of the nation of Israel come over here? Or where did they go in ships and in, in those slave ships? Cargo slave ships. Into where? America. So this Egypt, if it says we're going to be brought again into Egypt. And the word Egypt goes into house of bondage. Where do we go? Where would this be? America. Continuing on, though, it says, By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, going into slaves or servants, and no man shall buy you. All right, which they did purchase us this by going in to redeem. All right, the only one that could redeem or save us is Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, which he's coming to do. You know, and simultaneously putting an end to all the graven images, all the idols in this land to where we were serving and, and worshiping. And, and a lot of our people are still serving and worshiping. You know, he's going to cut all that shit off and we're going to be brought back into righteousness. So let's go back to Isaiah 19 and 1. It says, The burden of Egypt, it says, Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. And this swift cloud going into a chariot, a so-called UFO. It says, And shall come into Egypt. It says, And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And then when you go into this word moved, it goes into to quiver, totter, shake, reel, stagger, wander, move, sift, make move, wave, waver, tremble. Yeah, they're going to be trembling. All these different idols, you know, are going to be destroyed. Even, uh, <laughs> you know, these, uh, hell, because now in America, these, these people make anything into the idol, even themselves. You know, e even themselves, they put themselves on this on this type of pedestal. Um, especially the women, you know, these Instagram thotties and, uh, influencers and shit, they're going to, they're going to be put to naught as well. They're going to perish. And then when you go into the Strong's definition, it says, um, I'll just jump in the middle here. It says continually fugitive, or it says literally and figuratively as subjoined, continually fugitive, make to go up and down, be gone away. And that's the point I wanted. They're going to be gone away. All right. So it says, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And like it says in the NLT, the heart of the Egyptians melt with fear. Because again, when the Lord comes back, everybody's going to see it. And these people, what well, those that are not on their watch, those that didn't see the prophecies unfold before them, shit, a lot of them are gonna drop like flies. It says their hearts failing them for fear. They're gonna, they're not gonna be stable. They're not gonna know what's going on. You know, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And when that sudden destruction comes, just like a a shock, you get a massive shock, 
that heart, your heart could fuck around and stop <laughs> for fear. You know, they have that same fight or fight or flight. You know, but think it's going to be because, man, we don't know. Well, we know what how it's uh, uh, or like a description of it, but we don't know for sure how gruesome it's going to be, how scary it's truly going to be because we haven't got there yet. But we have an idea of how it's going to be. But until it actually comes, hey, but what? We're going to be stable in them times because we know the Lord is coming. And we and we see the prophecies unfolding before us. You know, the famine, um, chill, the famine of the word, the, uh, uh, the earthquakes that are passing, the wars, and that main one that we're waiting for, the micro sea hip. Um, but not to get off topic, let's go to uh so like it, let's go to Psalm 115 and 4. Let's see what that says. It says, Khan, there uh uh let me start at one. Khan, Psalms 115 and 1. It says, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. And what is his name? What is his son's name, if thou canst tell? It will be Yahweh. All right, that's the Heavenly Father's name. And Yahweh Shai is the only begotten Son's name where we give all glory. It says, for thy mercy, for thy truth's sake. Verse 2, wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their power? It says, but our power is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. And that's the thing he's going to delight in. Fucking putting all these idols to shame and every knee bowing down before him the true power the true god you know psalms 115 and 4 their idols are silver and gold the work of men's hands they have mouths but they speak not eyes have they but they see not they have ears but they hear not noses have they but they smell not they have hands but they handle not feet have they but they walk not neither speak they through their throat they that make them are like unto them. So is every one that trusteth in them. And what basically useless. That's what these people are. Or that's what they're worshiping. Something useless. Something that cannot deliver them. That's why it says in verse 9, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. Because he's our power. Who created the heavens and the earth. But these heathen, they don't have Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. That's why they, they trust in their idols, you know, and their different little um Buddhas that they set up, or different uh goddesses that they may worship. Whether it be wood or stone or different type of, you know what I'm saying, whatever material. Uh oh Israel Slack is Psalms 115 and 9. Oh Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their sheer. Shield Salakia and the Israelites being primarily so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but too, as well as a speckled bird that may look like these other nations, um, you know, but their spirit, their lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so from there, Salakia, let me go to a uh, wisdom, wisdom of Solomon. Uh, 14 and verse 12. And two, you think here in America, Babylon, the great, there's, there's so many idols to, to put down, <laughs> you know, that you, you can imagine because the, the main ones, what being, uh, Cesare Borgia, Serapis Christus and all these different churches and, you know, and, and just outside in the cities or, or these different crosses that they set up. Um, hell, Mother Mary. And they say uh, uh, Guadalupe, especially heavy in the northern northern kingdom. Ephraim is joined unto idols. They're big in that and serving idols. Hell, the different um, so-called white angels that they set up in all these different houses. Or whether it be um, the rosaries that our people worship, 
that could be that would be considered an idol because what they pray on to these things or uh, the different paintings that um Jake or even the heathen set up these uh like as altars or groves for their for their deceased family members that they bow down to and, and pray on to. All right, but as well as even like uh these statues of like these celebrities and shit. Kobe being one that just jumps to my head. All these different uh all these different idols, man. And as well as like the um going into um Molech that they serve at the what is it called? Forgot the place where they where they uh it's escaping me right now, but where the elites they go like every was it every summer and they do the sacrifices on uh Bohemian Grove, Khan Salakia, Bohemian Grove, where they go and offer up little children, little boys, and, and God knows what they're doing before then to them. Just just complete flat out wickedness, man. One of many reasons that this place has to be destroyed. Why it has to be destroyed. But this is um, Wisdom of Solomon 14. And I'll just start at 12. Matter of fact, I'll start at 11. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the gents' house shall there be a visitation. Like the title of this video, the Lord is coming to visit the idols of Babylon. And the Gentiles, the idols of the Gentiles, the, the idols of the heathen, there's going to be visitation. It says, because in the creature of the Most High, they are become an abomination and stumbling box to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. Basically traps and and such because the, these people, they're blinded by Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Yahweh Bashim Yahshai basically... Gave these people over to serving them idols, to have that mind to continue to serve them and not repent. Because what? We were once partakers in, in these things. We were once um, carried away onto these idols, these dumb idols, loosely paraphrasing, like it says in the New Testament. But what? The Lord gave us his word. He uh, He gave us that. Uh, he watered them dry bones. You know, I because I remember shit. I was heavy into um you know what i'm saying kissing the uh the uh crucifix around my neck and then thinking it gave me some type of protection while i wear it out you know or um bowing down in the in the catholic church literally they you have um the uh what what are they called the uh not podium but you know the seating and then you basically kick the kick the little knee rest down and you and you pray onto that idol you know, and it's a stumbling block unto our people, man. You know, but continuing on, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and uh, verse 12, it says, For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. Because he's going to confound them. There's going to be no remembrance of these idols. Because every knee is going to bow down to the true living power. All right, it says, uh, verse 14 again. It says, for by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. That's right. And it's only, it's only short, even though it may seem like it's drawn out over the years. We're not on the Lord's timing. You know, a thousand years is as one day to the Lord. So it truly is, is, is coming, coming to an end shortly. Because why? Yahweh Shai is, is coming quickly. He's right around the corner. So let's grab these two and we'll close out Isaiah 2 and 17. Yep, it says, and the loftiness of men shall be bowed down. Yeah, the pride of these individuals out here in the world that are puffed up. You think those that are into the 
uh, entertainment industry that get these Grammys or uh, what's the uh, the Academy Awards where it's literally an idol presented onto them or hell the trophies that they get in, in NBA, whether it be NBA, NFL, uh, NHL, where they, <laughs> you know, or they worship or they look to it. And that's that's all they think about. Making it as a God, it says. Isaiah 2 and 17, and the loftiness of men shall be bowed down. And the haughtiness of men shall be made low. All those that are arrogant, whether it be man or female. Yeah, even the kids. It says, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. And then OT, it says, idols will completely disappear. It says, God, I'm going to just continue on. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord. And this is who? The elites. You know, the uh, so-called white man, Esau, Edom. And whoever may be going with them <laughs> into those uh, bunkers and such. Caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord. Because they know hey, he's, he's coming to return, man. But what? That's when the fishers are going to be turning to hunters and we're going to seek them out. Uh it says what? And for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. And how is it going to be shaken? How is it going to be the, the earth rearing to and fro like a drunkard? Due to them ICBM missiles that get shot off. All the missiles that are being um, shot across the earth. As well as the return of the Lord and his angels. Shaking this earth. Shaking things up. In verse 20, Isaiah 2 and 20. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats to go into the clefts of the rocks. So basically, they're going to scurry away. <laughs> they're going to scurry away into the bunkers for quote unquote protection, but that's not going to save them. They're going to be the first ones in captivity. Because when the kingdom of heaven is established, Israel is going to have slaves, man. And Amalek, the so-called, or the J-double-O people, the so-called white people, they're going to be the the, uh, the main ones we're going to target. They're the, and all the heathen for that matter, but they're the head. All right. But uh, continuing on Isaiah 2 and 21, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth seize ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wherein is he uh for wherein is he to be accounted of wow and the nlt it says don't put your trust in mere humans right don't put uh don't make flesh your arm don't go down to egypt for help don't trust in this 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 government or the so-called white man and his his goodies and his dainties whatever you you know but trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because why? These, these, uh, they're mere mortals. Okay? And knowing too that they're the enemy. They're the wicked. When have they ever been, uh, uh, will put you in their best interest? All right, don't put your trust in these people or in people alone. Hey, put our trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, because they're going to come with that quote unquote, which is not going to be a solution, but they're going to come with a, what may appear to be as a solution. When, when the famine hits and they come with that micro sea hip, but we have to trust and lean upon Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and know that we're going to be satisfied in the time of evil. But like it says, Isaiah 2 and 22 in the NLT, don't put your trust in mere humans. They are as frail as breath. What good are they? What good are these humans? What good are these idols? <laughs> you know? But we're going to end here, Isaiah 45 and 23. It says, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me 
Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. It says in the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. And that's in the kingdom of heaven. Where all of our people will be perfected. Okay. And serving Yahweh Bashem Yahshai uh, in truth perfectly. And, and all those that were incensed against us, all our enemies, all the heathen, they're going to be put to shame. They're going to be in subjection. They're going to be servants unto us. And every single person is going to be serving Yahweh Bashem Yahshai, bowing down before him. All right, so with that, hey, Lord willing, uh, this all came together, was edifying and exhorting on to you. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. Double honors again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. <clears throat> all right, Shalom, Wa, Kwam Yasharatha.